How's it going, guys? My name is Alex Duda. I am the defensive coordinator at Dearborn High School. In today's session, we're going to learn about defensive line fundamentals. Now, before we start, I do want to make sure you guys know that this is a PowerPoint presentation that I do show my student athletes prior to starting uh, camp. Um, how I normally do it is a day or two before we start camp in the summer, I sit the defensive lineman down and we go through this, all right? And it goes over expectations, certain techniques that they will learn, and especially how to really understand and read blocking schemes. So like I said, my name is Alex Duda. Um, I have been coaching at Dearborn High School since 2014. Um, since I've been there, we have, we have had a lot of success. Um, currently, we compete in one of the toughest leagues in the state, the KLAA, and I love it. I love embracing and coaching against just top-end programs. Um, the coaches that we face week in and week out in our league are top-notch, and I love it. And it's, it's a great opportunity to compete against some of the best programs in the state. Prior to coaching at Dearborn High School, uh, I coached at Taylor Truman High School from 2010 to 2013. Um, prior to our arrival as a staff at Truman High School, they were one of the worst programs in Southeast Michigan. Um, in our four years there, we made the playoffs two times. Um, we won the league in 2012, and we actually finished um, with a Division II top 10 state ranking in 2012 as, as well. Now, this is a sheet that I did want to put on this PowerPoint presentation. I feel it's very valuable to a lot of high school coaches out there. All right. Now, this is our defensive game goals that we have for every week. For every opponent we face, we have 10 goals as a defense. And I'll go through each goal. Goal number one is to hold our opponent under four yards on first down. So what we do, we use huddle. We take the average of all the first down plays of our opponent on offense. Number two is one of the most important goals that we have, and that is winning the opening drive of each half. All right. I put a big, again, it is a very important, I put a big emphasis on winning that goal. If we set the tone early on with that first drive when we are on defense, um, on, you know, in both the first and second half, things are going to go well. Number three is get three takeaways, all right? Again, um, this is a very important goal that we have. Um, in the last two years as a team, we have 56 takeaways, all right? And that averages out to 2.9 takeaways a game. And if you go back and look at a lot of those games, the games where we did not have three takeaways are the games that we've lost, all right? So again, we put a huge emphasis on getting takeaways. Um, and we do this through a lot of drill work um, as a team, uh, we do have a takeaway circuit that we start practice off each day. And then a lot of those takeaway drills follow through in our indie drills as well for each position group. Number four is eliminate a touchdown off a sudden change. Very big, uh, goal again. Um, again, the huge emphasis here is if something bad goes wrong, how do we respond? All right. If we hold our opponent to a field goal off some off a you know an interception, a long kickoff return, something like that, some kind of sudden change, momentum swinging uh, play in a game, um, it is very important. Number five, eliminate touchdowns in the red zone. All right. And again, whenever our opponent gets in the red zone, if we hold them to three points, we are going to win a lot of games. All right. And again, that's something we go back and we. We, you know, we go through and then we're going to mark it. If our opponent had the ball in the red zone, how did we respond? Number six, this is probably our third most important goal. Hold our opponent under 40% on third down. All right. Again, if you look, stats show if an offense is getting a first down on third down more than 40% of the time, they are going to hold the ball. They're going to keep their drive going and it's going to increase the chances of them scoring. So again, we go through on huddle every third down, all right? How do we respond? Do they get the first down? Do they not get the first down, all right? And again, we try to hold them under 40%. Number seven, hold our opponent to two, two explosion plays or less, all right? Um, and that's a lot easier said than done, but again, we try to hold them to that. Number eight, 
hold opponents to 100 yards rushing or less. Now, I used to be a big advocate for this one, but at the same time, I look at it where if a team breaks off a long run, let's say they break off a 60-yard run and they get into our red zone and we hold them to a field goal, we won. So, again, that's still a huge emphasis for us, but it's not as important as it, as it used to be. Number nine, score on D. We always want to score on defense, all right? And number 10, finally, win. So how we do this is every Monday when our kids come in, we meet as an entire defense and we go over all these goals, all right? If they achieve a goal, the starting defense gets a helmet sticker for that goal. Um, and again, it, I look at it as a, as a positive incentive for our student athletes. And they, again, this is stuff that they're, you know, a lot of these athletes are looking at on their own. I, in the past, I've had athletes run to the sideline coach. That's our third takeaway. We get a, we get a helmet sticker. So again, whenever you can, you know, kind of give positive feedback, um, you know, of how things are supposed to go, um, it's going to be very successful. And number 10 is win. We want to win all of our games. This is our defensive philosophy. We have three main things that we look for while playing defensive line. The first thing is pursuit. We are going to fly around to the football every play. All right. We do a lot of pursuit drills as a team. We do a lot of pursuit drills in our indie sessions. No team is going to play harder than us on defense. That is what we stress week in and week out. And we've had a lot of success with that. Number two is hit. We will let our opponent know that we will be the aggressor for the entire game. Take pride in being a physical defense. Every single week, I talk to the defense about being the most physical team in the state that game. All right. And again, if the kids play with a lot of passion and they play with physicality, all right, we're going to be very successful. And number three is takeaway. We want to get the ball back. On each defensive series, we're either going to score take the ball away, or force our opponent to punt. That is our objective every time we take the field as a defense. All right, and again, like I said, having 56 takeaways in the last two years, it shows when you put a positive emphasis on getting the ball back, good things are going to happen. Now, alignments. Like I said, guys, from early on, this is what I show my athletes. So this might be information you guys already know. But again, it's very important that you still communicate this with your athletes. Even numbers are a head up alignment, okay? Zero, two, four, six. Those are all even numbers, and that is a head up alignment in our defensive line scheme. Odd numbers are an outside shade of alignment of the offensive alignment. One, three, five, seven. A number with an I is an inside shade alignment on the offensive line. All right, tight alignment. That is when your inside hand splits the crotch of the offense alignment. A tight alignment would be in a rundown, fourth and one, when you know they're going to run the ball and you need to get your hands on that offensive alignment. All right, and these are things that are communicated from the sideline to the field. And again, a lot of the kids do know this. They understand down and distance. So they understand when they have to be aligned in a tight alignment. A loose alignment. This is when your inside hand is lined up on the outside shoulder of the offensive lineman. This is something where it's going to be a pass down when you know they're going to throw the ball. One key element to this is um, as a defense, we do a lot of movements up front. It is very important that you do not show your movement. Um, if you are going to be moving by playing a tight or a loose alignment, because again, a good offensive coordinator and a good offensive line coach is going to see that and they're going to be able to tell when you are moving so again if you can keep your alignments tight or loose based off down and distance all right chances are you're going to be a lot more successful defensive line characteristics we have two main characteristics our get off and the keys our get off we want to establish a new line of scrimmage so what does that mean all right we want to take our offensive lineman and take him back we want to change the line of scrimmage into the backfield of our opponent. Okay. And we do that not by shooting gaps, but by physically taking our guy, taking him into the backfield. We want to be in an attacking stance, crowd the ball and have a great get off. All right. You cannot have a great get off unless you are in a good, comfortable stance. 
So we, again, on a daily basis, we are working on getting in comfortable stances where the kids can get off the ball. And we do a lot of different variations of get offs to make sure they are comfortable in getting off the ball fast enough. We want to attack and react on the movement of, of the offensive lineman. We want to make a play on their ground, not ours. Again, um, we talk about making a play on their ground. It's going to be in their backfield where we are going to establish the new line of scrimmage. The big thing is, um, I don't have, and we're going to talk about it more later. Um, we react on the movement of the offensive lineman, not the football. And that's something we're going to get into more in depth later. And finally, we want to get our hands on the offensive lineman before he gets his hands on us. Um, again, if the offensive lineman gets his hands on the defensive lineman, all right, chances are the defensive lineman is going to lose. We are going to get off the ball fast and violent, getting our hands on the offensive lineman. Number two is keys. Read your keys. If you ask any of my players, again, a defensive lineman, a linebacker, or a guy in the secondary, they're always going to say, my biggest thing is read your keys. And as a defensive lineman, it's the ability to read. It's your ability to react to a blocking scheme that tells you what type of play it is and where the ball is going. So, again, we are going to be reading our offensive lineman and the type of block that he does, all right, is going to tell us um, what type of play it is, where the ball is going. And again, it's very important that defensive linemen understand blocking schemes. Next, we want to be alert of the stance of the offensive lineman and his splits. Be attentive. Utilize a pre-snap read and communicate before every play. Again, at the high school level, we see a lot of splits where if an offensive lineman, if there's a wider split here, chances are they're trying to run the ball there or influence us to widen out. And a lot of this is film study and getting tendencies on your opponent. Um, and again, that's something that our inside backers communicate with our defensive linemen, understanding the splits, all right? If the offensive lineman is back on his heels, if they are leaning, just different things like that and being alert and understanding what is going on up front with the offensive lineman. Now we have two types of stances at Dearborn High. The first of our two stances is, is a stance for our rundown. Now the reason why we change is because we want to get off in certain ways in comparison to a run down and a pass on. We're going to go over that more in detail later on. First, for a rundown, our feet are going to be shoulder width apart and have a good base for our balance. Heel instep of foot depth in our stance. The back foot's toe should be lined up with the front foot's instep. Back foot should be the same as the down hand. Our weight on the front foot and the down hand. And again, we want everything going forward. The down hand should be on the fingertips, not a flat hand. We play with a flat back, butt up, eyes up. And our off hand is in a comfortable position, ready to strike. Now, the reason why we are in this stance is because we want to get a quick six inch step whenever our visual key moves. And we're going to get more into that in a little bit. Our next type of stance is, is a, a pass down stance. Now, if you look at Ali right here, the first thing I see is his feet are a little bit wider and his butt is up. So our feet are shoulder width apart, heel toe depth with feet. All right. And again, in comparison to the run stance, it was heel to instep. Now it's heel to toe. The back foot's toe should be lined up with the front foot's heel. The back foot should be the same as the down hand, weight on the front foot and down hand. The down hand should be on the fingertips. Finally, flat back, butt up, eyes up, off hand, in a comfortable position, ready to strike. All right. So whenever it is a pass down, my big emphasis is think track stance. All right. If you are, if you are going to be running track, if you're if you're doing some kind of sprint, you don't. Again, you want to really go heel toe depth and gain as much ground as you can. All right. So again, that is the difference between our pass down stance and our rundown stance. Or get off. When your visual key moves, you move. You're going to explode out of your stance. Now, this right here is the difference between the run stance and the pass stance. 
in the run stance, you are going to take a quick six inch step. Now, the reason why is if you take a elongated step, you are going to be off balance. And again, for a rundown, we want to be, again, get that foot in the ground, get our hands on that offense alignment. And again, balance is very key. For the pass stance, you want to replace your down hand. So I really emphasize gaining as much ground as you can gain out of that pass stance. Um, get that first step in the ground quick strike with your hands all right and as you can see in this picture right here this is one of our everyday drills it's called the train drill it is a great drill that we hit every single day first day of camp or the playoffs we are always doing train drill it really emphasizes pad level physicality and a violent punch with your hands um and again this is a drill i would recommend to all defensive line coaches out there to implement um, and again, you could put a little marker on the bag if the kids are playing a little high, but it's been a great drill for us in the past. Hands. Um, I emphasize three S's with hands. Strike, separate, and shed. When we strike, the heel of the, we strike with heel of the hands, thumbs up, elbows inside. A good football position with your hands. The down hand, which is your inside hand, is punching sternum and your outside, your offhand is, which is outside, is grabbing the armpit. So just try to visualize inside hand sternum, outside hand underneath the armpit, grabbing cloth. And we really try to play with our hands above our eyes. And the reason why we play with our hands above our eyes is because it really helps us with, with pad level. Um, it's very easy for kids to play high. Um, to play on the defensive line, you got to play with great pad level, especially if you are a smaller kid. If you are a smaller kid and you try to play high, it's not going to be very successful. So really try to play with your hands above your eyes when you strike the offensive lineman. Number two is separate. We want to create space between you and the offensive lineman by locking out arms. All right. We want to fight to get extension. All right. After that initial punch, we are not done. All right. We are going to roll our hips and try to get extension with our arms to gain control of that offense alignment. Leverage, leverage, leverage. All right. If a kid plays with great leverage, and when I say great leverage, I mean getting underneath that offense alignment, getting that extension, they are going to have control of that offense alignment. And again, we emphasize play with hands above eyes. That is when we separate as well. It's not only the initial strike, it is also after um, after you're getting that separation with the offensive lineman. And number three, shed. It's a violent movement to get off the block. Rip or swim. Put him in your hip pocket. Now, one thing I do teach my kids when we are shedding a block, all right, and we are using the rip, really emphasize and practice taking that inside hand and ripping it thumb to ear. All right. Cause again, too many times kids just want to go straight up and they're not going to be able to get off blocks. But if you really over exaggerate that in a drill and practice, um, you're going to be very successful with that. Put them in your hip pocket. Essentially what that means. We're not getting up the field. All right. We're going to play at the line of scrimmage playing at the hip pocket of the offensive lineman. The visual key, now this is very important. The visual key is the part of the offense alignment that you are reading. Again, like I said earlier in this presentation, we do not key the football. We are gonna be reading the near hip of the offensive lineman. This will tell you what type of block is coming. All right, and again, throughout the season, uh, my goal is to not only understand what type of block is coming, but understanding the whole blocking scheme as a whole for all my defensive linemen and understanding if this one player gets this block, it's going to be this play because this is how it works as a, as a blocking scheme. So the types of blocks that I teach at Dearborn high um, are base block, down block, double team, inside, outside pole, fold block, reach block, pass block, and cut block. Now all these types of blocks are things that we go over and practice on a daily basis. Now, do I teach all of these blocks at once? No, I do not. I teach all the important blocks, the type of blocks that these keys are gonna see more often. And then I try to build upon that on a daily basis. 
Um, and I'll get more into that uh, later in the presentation. We're going to go right ahead to pass rush. Every defense alignment's favorite thing to do. And I get it. It's fun. But if you cannot stop the run on first and second down, a defense alignment cannot have fun on third down going to get the quarterback. And that's something that I really emphasize with my kids. If you win first and second down, you guys can have fun and go get the quarterback on third down. First and foremost, have a plan. Know what your best pass rush move is, okay? Understand if you are good at some kind of speed rush, long arm, whatever you feel more comfortable doing, make sure you have that. And again, as a plan. Number two, move plus counter move. Understanding based on whatever the offense alignment is doing, you got to be able to counter. If he's giving you the inside and you are a defensive end, if you do go inside, and I say that, if you do, you better get home. If you go inside, understanding the counter move. Understand what the offensive lineman is giving you. Active feet. To rush to the passer, you always have to keep your feet moving. All right? If your feet stop, you are never going to get home. Many times, we're not going to get sacks. But again, if we get pressure, and again, that quarterback feels pressure, we are still going to have the same type of impact as if we had a sack, where if that quarterback feels the pressure and he throws an interception, that's even better than a sack in most cases. So if we have active feet and we keep our feet moving and we're going forward, we will be just all right. Ball get off. This is the only time we key the ball. And I say that because if the offensive lineman is a little late with the get off in a pass rush scenario, that does not benefit us. So we are going to be keying the ball whenever it is a pass down, third and long. Once the ball snap, we're going. Gain ground to the quarterback. Again, you know, that goes back to keeping your feet moving, having active feet. If we play at the line of scrimmage and that quarterback has all time to sit back in that pocket and throw it, he's essentially playing seven on seven. As a defense alignment, it is our job to create havoc and make it uncomfortable for that quarterback by gaining ground. Attack a third of a man. Now, this is something that I am very, very passionate about. Um, a lot of coaches talk about attacking a half a man in pass rush. I look at it as thirds. Shoulder, mid part of the body, shoulder. If you are attacking a quarterback in a pass rush, all right, only attack a third of a man. Everything is speed in pass rush, all right? So if you can only attack that shoulder, chances are you're going to have a better get off and you're going to have more success getting to the quarterback. And finally, lane integrity, okay? Like I said, you have to stay in your lane when you are rushing the quarterback. If you get out of your lane, if you know you can make the sack, if you get out of your lane to try to make it, you better make that sack. Otherwise, if that quarterback gets outside and we lose contain, it is not going to be fun on the sideline, all right? So, again, lane integrity is, is essential in pass rush. These are some other pass rush essentials, double team. Um, again, if you are getting a double team without bringing any pressure, if they, are, if they have to double team defense alignment and pass rush, that's going to leave someone else free. And that means you're doing a hell of a job getting to the quarterback. Rush one guy. All right. You're not going to rush the, you're not going to rush two guys. It's not, it's two versus one focusing on one guy and you want to get them on different levels. Meaning, you don't want to play at the line of scrimmage. Get that first guy to a different level than the second guy, work across him. Again, the second offensive lineman leaves the counter back to the edge. Transition, uh, changing from playing the run to pass during the course of a play. Again, we see a lot of RPO, okay? Um, if you are getting a run read and then you feel it is a pass, you just gotta be able to adjust that, all right? And that's stuff we work on in practice but again, like I said, the foundation of our defense at Dearborn High is stopping the run first, all right? If we stop the run, third down, we're going to go have some fun and go get the quarterback. Speed rush. Again, the most important thing on speed rush is ball get off. Work outside a third of a man. Our speed rush, I'm thinking more so my defensive ends. So they are really going to attack that outside shoulder 
of the offensive lineman. We rarely see tight end in our league. So let's say it's tackle and tackle. They are gonna, they're really gonna work the outside shoulder of that tackle, all right? With minimal contact. Everything is fast, everything is upfield, everything is speed. These are some of the things that we work on um, in speed rush. Speed to rip, speed to swim, speed to chop rip, speed to club rip, speed club swim, speed to long arm. Again, these are things we work on in practice. And I let the, again, I let the kids choose whatever they want to do, whatever they feel most successful with. Again, they have, a, they have an option of different uh, pass rush moves that they can do. Um, but those are the things that we work on. Um, and again, finish counters based on pressure. Meaning, however, that offense alignment is adjusting, all right, we're going to have to counter and finish based off that. Bull rush. Again, ball get off. All right, it's third down. This is more so for my interior guys. Leverage. Again, we talk about getting our hands on that offensive lineman, collapsing that pocket inside. And again, and again it goes back to the fundamentals. Hand placement. All right, if I'm only attacking a third of a man, all right, my inside hand is sternum, my outside hand is near the armpit, and I'm grabbing cloth. All right. That's for bull rush, more so my interior guys getting pressure up the middle, collapsing the pocket. Again, if I don't attack a third of a man, sure, I could have a violent punch, but I'm not gaining any ground. And again, for pass rush, we talk about gaining ground. For my interior guys, um, we, finish, we finish our bull rush move based on pressure, bull to rip, bull to swim, or um, push-pull. And again, it's still focusing on uh, attacking a third of a man, getting upfield. Now, uh, one thing I do want to go over, I do not think it's in here, is for pass rush, the responsibilities. For my defensive ends, okay, when they are rushing the passer, um, um, they do not want to get any deeper then the quarterback's back shoulder. And we do a lot of drills with that, where if they feel that offensive lineman riding them out, they got to work back inside. Now, my two interior uh, defensive linemen, their, their marker is no deeper than that quarterback's near shoulder, all right? So whenever that quarterback steps up in the pocket, if they feel they're getting close to that near shoulder, those guys are working back inside. So we'll do a lot of drills where we'll do some half-line rushes, where half line um, pass rush drills, where the quarterback, where the defense alignment are feeling themselves getting kind of pushed out and they got to work back inside, focusing in on lane integrity and wherever their marker is, whether it's near shoulder or back shoulder. Now, <clears throat> excuse me, um, we're going to go more in depth with the type of blocks that we do. The first type of block is the base block. Um, now, again, these are things we hit every day in practice. So let's say this is day one of camp and I'm teaching base block. That's going to be the only block that I am teaching all day to those kids. We're going to walk through it. We're going to go 50%. We're going to stop and we're going to really just look at our position. Are we playing with correct technique? So base block. Base block is when an offensive lineman is trying to take our defensive lineman vertical. He's just trying to take them and drive them straight down the field. So as a defensive lineman, how do we react? All right. We press back into the offensive lineman. And again, our mindset is we want to take him vertical. Remember what we talked about, establishing a new line of scrimmage. We want to play on their ground. So you see in this picture, the offensive lineman is trying to take our nose vertical we want to strike back, all right, trying to establish a new line of scrimmage. After the initial strike, we want to move our feet. So we're just not going to punch and stop. We are going to punch and, again, play with great pad level, great leverage. We are going to keep taking him vertical, moving our feet. The key is staying square, all right? From an offense alignment's perspective, all right, um, you know, they really teach their guys – Offensive line coach really teaches the offensive lineman angles based on how shoulders are turned. If we keep the offensive lineman shoulders square, it's going to be hard for them to get any movement. And then finally, we want to rip into our gap, um, and we finish thumb to ear. Um, as you see right here, 
Um, this is our nose. Um, so he would take him vertical, get inside right here. Um, and like I said earlier in the presentation, we don't see a lot of tight end, and I probably should have said it earlier. Our base alignment, all right, we're going to play four defense alignment, all right, and we're going to play twos and fours, all right? Our whole philosophy is you are not going to run the ball tackle to tackle, meaning our contained players are outside backers, all right? Again, so in this case, if this was the nose, he's trying to get into a gap, all right? If one of our defensive ends was getting a base block, they are going to square play with great technique, all right, take that tackle back, try to rip inside, get into B gap. All right. So again, we play twos and fours um, as our base defense. Number two is reach block. All right. This is a very common block. All right. And it's just something we hit a lot in practice. Um, as you see down here in the corner, um, we have different variations and I'll go over some drills that you guys can do to work on a reach block. First and foremost, we want to take a violent step with our front foot and punch with our outside hand. Now, normally, we our first step is with our foot that is staggered back, okay? When we read reach, when we see that hip try to get outside to hook us, I'm going to take a step with that front foot and punch with my outside hand, all right? And it needs to be fast and violent. We are going to fight, we're going to fight pressure with our outside hand. Again, do not let them hook you. If your gap moves, you move. It is okay to stay engaged with the offense alignment and force the running back to string it out. Again, we are going to have linebackers work inside um, of defensive ends, and we are going to have other guys pursuing down the line of scrimmage. So again, if we have to string that out, that string that running back out, and he keeps going and our gap moves, that is fine because the rest of the defense is pursuing to the football. Finally, we are going to rip or play with an arm over with the inside hand to shut the block. Quick, violent rip, finish with thumb to ear. If you feel a reach block and you can beat him, and you can beat your offensive lineman to the outside, beat him. Essentially, if you are a much better athlete than the uh, offensive lineman and you can beat him outside, that's fine, all right? Again, if we have to hop outside and that and that running back has to cut it back with a pursuing defense, we are fine. The main thing is we cannot get reach right off the bat. All right. We can either jump it very fast, forcing that running back to cut back inside, or if we string it out and we string that running back out, either scenario works. All right. But the worst thing that can happen is that tackle to reach that defensive end. And again, it's going gonna, it's gonna to allow that running back to gain some ground. Now, like I said, some of the drills we can do, um, you could start in a fit position and just have the offensive lineman take that step so that defensive end can get the feel on what it feels like to get reached. Um, another thing we do in the summer, we have a drill called blind drill where we put, um, we'll, take the, we'll take shirts, put them around a kid's head so they can't see, cover their eyes. You get in the fit position. The offensive lineman is going to pick either side, all right, to try to reach the defensive lineman, and the defensive lineman has to feel it and react, all right? And, again, it is a very live drill. Um, it, it, it's Again, I look at it as it's very um, real life. Um, and, again, a lot of the kids compete during that drill. When I say live, I mean sometimes I got to take the kids down a notch with that drill but it's great. I mean, it definitely helps with the reach block. Um, the next type of block is down block. Um, now I have different things that I teach um, my defensive tackles and my defensive ends with a down block. Again, I keep it simple for my defensive tackles. If you are getting a down block, meaning you are not getting blocked by your visual key, all right? He is either crossing your face most of the time, or he could go outside of you, all right? Something is coming. And that's how I teach it. If you are not getting blocked, if you are a defensive tackle, you are getting trapped. All right, so how we teach it is this. Um, if a defensive tackle gets a down block, you want to squeeze that offensive lineman who is trying to get inside to either 
double down on the, on the guy inside of you or work to the second level, squeeze him into that gap. All right. And then you're going to go play flat down the line of scrimmage. So as you see here, we talk about squeeze the offense alignment into the gap that they want to run. All right. We're going to stay inside of a pulling um, offense alignment. And then we're going to wrong arm. When you wrong arm, that is essentially a technique to spill everything. Um, and we see a lot of inside trap on our league. And I feel like we, we do a very good job of eliminating inside trap with our defensive tackles, just based on the understanding of if you are not getting blocked, you are going to get trapped for my defensive tackles. Um, and again, this is a drill we hit every day with reach block. We work on this. For my defensive ends, it is a little bit different, all right, depending on the type of team we are playing, uh, especially the quarterback. But, um, again, first thing we do if we are getting a down block as a defensive end, we are going to squeeze. Our first step is we are going to squeeze the offensive lineman. Second step, the hip should be flipped parallel to the line of scrimmage. All right, we're going to bend flat down the line of scrimmage, look for a pulling offensive lineman or running back. Now I say that with, you know, like I said, it changes week to week, but if we face a quarterback with a lot of inside zone, all right, we're not going to play it like that. But if that quarterback is no real threat to run the ball, all right, and we see a lot of power, wide trap, that's how we would play it. It's essentially the same thing as a defensive tackle um, for a defensive end. Now, if there is a significant threat of the quarterback keeping the ball on the read game, all right, we're going to play it a lot safer. We're going to squeeze. We're going to break down. But let's say the quarterback is not very athletic, all right? Again, we stay inside of the player trying to kick us out. We wrong arm, forcing him outside, then we get vertical. Now, uh, we're just not going to spill it, all right? We're going to spill it and then play right off the butt of that guy trying to kick us out and try to make the play. Because usually that guy is coming right off the butt of whoever's kicking out that DN. And again, I don't want our guys just to be bitch players. I want them making plays. Um, but like I said, it changes week to week. Um, but, you know, the way offenses are going, we are a lot more um, conservative with the way we play down block, where um, if it is more of a read game, we're just going to squeeze and sit. We're going to squeeze and sit and let that quarterback make a decision by us breaking down right there. Um, again, another drill we do every single day. We'll do our, our key drills with down block. Pass block, this is pass block, this is our speed rush. Again, we talked about working a third of a man, minimal contact, all right? So if you look at our defensive end right here, he wants to attack the outside shoulder of 53. Gain as much ground as you can with that first step. We talked about replacing your downhand, all right? Get that foot in the ground, get up the field and go. Flip hips. And uh, flip hips, violent club, quick, violent hands, active feet, active hands. We are always moving in pass rush. Now, we talk about um, our visual key, which is the near hip, all right? A way you can work um, a pass block is just having that offense alignment, just kick back and take that kick step like they're trying to get in the pass pro. As soon as you see that, that defensive lineman is shot out of a cannon getting up the field, trying to get vertical, all right? And these are everyday drills you guys can do based off um, keys. So again, like I said, minimal contact up the field. Bull rush for uh, pass block, again, same philosophy. You want to work a third of a man, hand placement, pick a side to attack, all right? Usually um, they have a designated side that, that I'm, I'm, I'm going to give them. But sometimes we'll, you know, we'll play some games, you know, we'll line up here and then, you know, rush the passer going with a different gap without bringing any pressure from our linebackers. Um, we're going to finish the move based off pressure, meaning they have a counter move, active feet, quick, violent hands. And the same thing, again, when you practice it, have that defensive lineman key um, the hip of the offensive lineman, as soon as it snaps back, we're going. Now, um, like I said earlier in the presentation, we key the ball on third down, but in practice, we don't want to give it away that, again, I'm not going to tell my guy, hey, we're going to key the ball here because they're going to know it's fast. Um, we'll set it up where 
they key um, the hip of the offensive lineman, and on his movement, we read, we react. Um, normally, um, through our progression, we'll go probably two to three a day after I introduce everything. But again, I don't want to overwhelm the kids. I want them to feel comfortable in what we do, and I want them to be confident. I want them to understand what exactly is going on from the offensive line scheme. Inside, outside, pull. All right, so this is more so for my interior guys, my two techs, all right? Um, what I teach is a swipe technique. And again, if you go back and look and remember what I said, if you are not getting blocked, you are getting trapped. That is only the case if he releases inside or outside of you, not blocking you. But if my visual key now pulls, all right, my defensive tackle knows they are trying to run trap or some kind of trap game away from me. So what do I do? And again, by playing a two technique, which is head up on the guard, a gap responsibility, as soon as my guy goes, all right, my eyes is going to turn right onto the center, all right? Because I know if my guy is pulling, the center is coming down the block. So what do I do? I rip across the face of the offensive lineman, um, of the offensive lineman blocking down, which is more so the center in most cases. As you can see it um, drawn down here, same thing. He pulls, he's coming down, I'm ripping across. How we play this is it's a horizontal step with your outside foot. My aiming point, I want to punch the outside shoulder of the offensive lineman trying to block down on me, okay? Again, we talk about shoulders, you know, staying square for an offensive, uh, for a defensive lineman. If we can keep their shoulders square, they're not going to be able to block us. And again, that center has a good angle blocking down. So I'm going to aim for that outside shoulder, trying to fight to keep, keep, to keep his shoulders square and rip across. Again, rip inside with hand across the face of the offensive lineman. Um, and essentially what I tell them is just try to get inside of that gap. All right. Try to get inside of that gap. If I'm an offensive coordinator and I have to deal with a guy coming across from backside, getting into play side a gap, there's going to be a lot of issues. Again, that is getting an extra hat to play side that originally was not accounted for. So that is how we teach that. This is, again, another drill we do um, every single day. Um, if I had to say for our key drills, the most common key drills that we do, reach block, down block, and then, we'll, again, inside, outside, pull, using swipe technique. Those are the three main ones that we hit on a daily basis. Again, based with our philosophy of you are not going to run the ball tackle to tackle um inside of us as a defense so again if we can get that extra hat to play side while performing the swipe technique when your visual key pulls um i think we're gonna be very successful for defensive ends rarely do we see it but if the tackle releases outside that's usually trying to influence all we're going to do is we're going to press and keep our eyes inside all right what a lot of teams try to do with us is they see that we're very good at reading our blocks they're going to try to influence him going out and then try to cut back inside. So what I teach my DNs, we're going to punch, keep our eyes inside. So this is inside and outside pull. Uh, fold block. We don't see it often, but again, um, you know, I think we saw it once or twice last year. Again, just trying to mess with our keys. So essentially for a fold block, once our visual key leaves, we're going to press the new offensive lineman blocking down it. All right. So essentially, from the offensive lineman's perspective, a lot is not changing. They're just changing who is doing the blocking assignments. We're going to fight across his face and rip with our inside hand. He's going to take us to the ball. And that's what I keep stressing. Sometimes, um, again, you know, this might catch our guys off guard a little bit. But again, if the kids understand the fold block, why they're trying to do it, where they're trying to run the ball, I think we'll be all right. And finally, we float on the line of scrimmage to find the football. Again, we play fast. We are always pursuing to the ball. Double team. Um, with my defensive tackles, um, in years past, I've had my defensive tackles coach run this a lot. A lot of walkthrough, okay?
Okay, again, I want to minimize the amount of contact on our kids in practice. So again, just understanding the fit and the technique needed to defeat the double team. Um, but for, again, if you are an interior defensive lineman, you're going to see this a lot. So this is something that we have to hit a lot in practice. So for the double team, most important thing is you want to work your visual key. So my visual key, if I am a two tech, is my guard. So I am keying the hip of my guard. Once you feel pressure, all right, I'm sorry, let me go back. Um, we're going to treat it like a base block. So as soon as he comes out of his stance, gets his hands, I'm punching and I'm pressing. As soon as I feel the uh, pressure key coming down, and that's more so the case, the center blocking down on me, I then want to flip my hips and rip or swim with my inside hand. So there's two main components of the double team. Pressure key and the visual key. The visual key is my normal key, all right? I'm gonna be focusing on him the whole time. As soon as I feel the pressure key come down, that's when I violently flip my hips and rip or swim to stay into the gap. And again, we talk about getting skinny, all right? Rarely do I want my kids turning their shoulders, but as soon as it happens, flip, turn your shoulders, get into the gap, all right? They're double teaming you for a reason. But again, the most important thing is never attacking two offensive linemen, focusing in on your visual key. Um, our next block is cut block. It's usually backside. We do not see it often. Now, if I was an offensive coordinator or an offensive line coach, I would do this more often, especially when you see a defense that plays fast, all right? So like I said, this is usually backside when an offensive lineman dives at your legs. He's gonna cut you backside just to slow you down. Especially if you have a backside DN that bends it flat down the line of scrimmage, makes a lot of plays backside. What you wanna do is you wanna press his shoulders into the ground and find the football. It's a mental obstacle for defensive linemen, all right? Essentially, they want us to play slow. Again, as a defensive coordinator, a defensive line coach, all right? I would do this more often to try to slow down a lot of those teams. But again, I talk about this with my kids. It cannot happen, all right? If my defensive linemen are thinking in their head, is this offensive lineman going to cut me right here, all right? They are not playing to the level of where I expect them to play, all right? They're not playing at the level uh, physically, nor as fast as they should be playing, all right? So again, we cannot let, us, let, it, let this slow us down. Um, and again, something, you know, we'll walk through with bags from time to time, but again, this is the cup lock. Um, well, I hope everyone enjoyed this session. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. Probably the best outlet to reach me is on Twitter. You can find me at coach Duda. Again, feel free to DM me with any questions. Um, you know, again, you know, during this time, it's important that we stay positive with everything going on there's a lot a lot of negativity going out in this world so make sure you are still working on your craft all right and i say that from a football standpoint make sure you are there for your family and your athletes i thank you for the time and everyone have a great day